चुडेल एंड अ डायन दे हैव अ वेरी सिमिलर ओवरलैपिंग काइंड ऑफ ओरिजिन थियरी इट इज बिलीव दैट वेन अ वुमेन डाइज एट चाइल्ड बर्थ और वेन शी इज प्रेगनेंट एंड इफ शी इज नॉट क्रीमेटेड प्रॉपरली विद ऑल द रिचुअल्स एंड ऑल then because of her, the latent desire in her mind she turns into a chudel and what happens in that reality she will be on this earth unsatisfied and she will not uh, be able to see the happiness of other women yakshinis are these demi goddesses they are believed to also be on earth and when they come here they are mostly in their evil forms beautiful to look at but then there is this one form of them which you know once the seduction has worn off then they come into this evil form and they will of course their victims are usually men so this is one of the most interesting guests that we've had on the show we've also edited the podcast slightly we've brought in a little bit of music because i feel like stories about ghosts horror stories stories that scare you are best enjoyed when it's slightly edited through the power of filmmaking I hope you enjoy this slightly hutke episode. This one's with Neil De Silva. He's a horror writer. He's worked with paranormal investigators and he's here to share everything that his research has brought to his own mind. He's on the Ranveer show today. Lots of talk about ghosts, lots of talk about spirits, lots of talk about the astral world. This is not a podcast for everyone because it's scary. It's definitely not a podcast for skeptics. It's a podcast for believers. more podcast like this make sure you follow us on spotify for spotify exclusive which means that every episode is available on spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world this is neil de silva on the ranbir show speaking about horror Super pumped about this episode, Neil Silva. Welcome to TRS, sir. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Looking forward to our chat. I don't even know where to start, considering the number of books you've written on subjects related to the paranormal, uh, Indian culture, and so many of your books. Yeah. Um, you know, I I genuinely don't know where to begin this conversation. I do want to begin with excitement, but at the same time, I want to make it atmospheric and scary for our viewers. So, how are you, sir? So I'm good. I'm feeling well. I, I have just had a long drive, so that's the only problem. But otherwise, fine. Now it's a chilled chat. Okay. Uh, I write a lot of horror as well. Like uh, it's fiction that I haven't published, mm -hmm. and I write it because there's so many experiences I've had in my own life as well. And I feel like anyone who writes horror, be it yourself, be it Stephen King, we either we're believers or we've had some sort of childhood experiences with the paranormal. in mm -hmm. order to even think and i'm sure as is the case with every author you're also a big reader and i'm sure you're into reading horror reading about the paranormal understanding these subjects better so let me tell you how it started for me the inclination towards horror that was through reading so even as a child you know when i was in my grade 7 and 8 i read edgar allan poe and dracula and frankenstein so those were the books that attracted me those were the that was the area where i veered towards i read a lot of this gothic stuff and uh, coming from western authors so those castles and uh, the dark brooding environment characters who had this kind of uh, some kind of problem in their lives they are facing they're going to it so yeah that stayed with me somewhere i think even as a, when you are reading this this kind of stuff as a child there was no censorship in my home for reading so when you are reading this kind of stuff i was not afraid of the stories but somewhere i connected with them and i felt like uh like i wanted to create these kinds of worlds myself so that is where it all began fear of the darkness i think a lot yeah, that, that's very common that's same. very common and and what's and, weird is i had the same and i'm also creating a lot of dark ghost based yes. content so that strong fear of the dark has turned into art later yeah. on in life but go on. i i think that's a catharsis you know somewhere we face those fears that's what i do so okay so i was quite afraid of the dark so afraid that i would not even go in another room even though the whole family was sitting here i would not go in the next room. same so i was terrified now i would have this recurrent kind of uh, i would not say a dream but a kind of vision that in the next room where it is completely dark 
from the ceiling a man would come down and whoever goes there he would dis- he would you know grab that person that was my phobia i would think that some something will drop from the ceiling and grab me so this was the experience that haunted me for 2 years or so my own fears my own phobias that i had growing up they have landed in my books but in a different form you're scaring other people now with what you were scared yeah, of growing i'm up. just passing it on <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the nature of being a host is i I've, i've just heard that that realm is full of suffering that reality is full mm-hmm. of suffering and uh, i mean where do you even turn in order to get educated about ghosts you can turn to philosophical books yeah. you can turn to spiritual books the only thing i've learned is that when you have an unnatural death before your time has actually come to die you spend the remainder of that time in mm. this realm as a ghost and this is from uh, books like the garud puran autobiography of a yogi all these books talk about these occult realities but what do you think so yeah there is a strong spiritual connect to all this uh, when i started out as uh, when i was writing horror my initial works were all fiction make believe worlds make believe monsters of course i wrote about agoris in my first book but that is again based on research when i started writing about ghosts uh, that was the time when i also started studying more about the whole world i met paranormal investigators people who are actually working day in and day out to find the truth behind this and uh, the surprising thing is no two paranormal investigators also will have the same theory for ghosts they will think some they will have some nuance that is different so what i have come to the conclusion is after writing you know books like vijay alani i have written haunted with sarbajit mohanty i have written the spirit struck to me both were very different in their mindset in their way of thinking like you can explain the differences jay is more of a rationalist jay alani he is a more of a rationalist so he is uh, he believes that there is a lot of blind faith and superstition worked into the paranormal world a part of it is real a part of it really is the occult is really the paranormal what we say but the major part of it at least in india is uh, you know just a commercial commercially propagated thing so like people who are believing in black magic and all using it to make a quick buck so that is jay's belief so jay is trying to find out where the real paranormal lies and what part of it is fake so i'll come to that sarbajit on the other hand he believes that paranormal energies are all around us which is also part of jay's belief but sarbajit believes that these energies are a kind of a other dimension which is here right now in this room as well they can see us we cannot interact with them do you think your chase for writing horror has attracted horror into your life that's, it has that's that's what people do tell me that's what people do tell me that when you try to write about their world they come to know that you are writing about their world yeah i'm because i've been writing a lot of horror lately and i have been feeling creeped out i don't know yes. how else to explain it but anyways so go on and what i mean by creeped out is very weird dreams yeah so that happens a lot not just the dreams the dreams are yeah okay dreams do happen because your mind is still working when you are asleep but i have had real experiences uh this one time i was in goa i was i had booked a cottage on the other side of kalangut which is a very lonely kind of place desolate place i like that place because of its vibe so i was writing a book there a horror novel i was in the middle of this particularly horrifying scene which required all my attention so my eye was only on that 13 inch mac and i was just looking there nowhere else and i felt something cold pass by from behind i just felt it and it was so material you know usually ghosts are just like an illusion in your peripheral sight but this was very material i could feel that something happened and um, then i just looked around and lights started flickering and the lights were flickering quite bad you know it, it was not like a normal fluctuation i went out of the room to see the other places everyone was asleep but the other lobby lights and everything was quite okay only my room was the one flickering so these kinds of things do happen i think it comes in you somewhere what do paranormal investigators say about the presence of ghosts first of all are all ghosts evil or good no no some ghosts are good no. i think uh, the majority of them are good 
ओके बट देन विच आर द गोस विच आर इविल द इविल गोस आई थिंक फ्रॉम व्हाट आई हैव हर्ड फ्रॉम ऑल दीस एक्सपीरियंसेस फ्रॉम द पैरानॉर्मल इन्वेस्टिगेटर्स द गोस दैट हैव समथिंग लेफ्ट इन देयर लाइव्स इन देयर करंट लाइफ समथिंग दैट दे वांटेड टू डू और दोस दोस हु हैड एन अनजस्ट काइंड ऑफ डेथ एंड मर्डर murders because they are mostly dead by some violence some kind of violence there has been violence either throughout their lives or in their death so th- there is this concept of pishach the ghoul that we have our hindu mythology so the pishach is believed to be uh, created when a man dies a very violent death in a surge of anger so if suppose you kill me and i am very angry that you killed me but i can't do anything and i just have to die i will probably become a pishach so this is where uh, the ghosts turn evil and like once a poltergeist poltergeist are just noisy ghosts they are they are not evil so the experiences of poltergeist that i have chronicled uh, i have seen that they are not evil they are mischievous they are naughty they try to disorient you and they try to somehow uh, sap your energies but they will not kill you poltergeist they hardly kill but pishach can pishach can have you heard first hand accounts of pishach hauntings not of pishach but uh, there were certain other uh, creatures i could say entities that i have worked with uh, one of my books is yakshini so yakshinis are very prevalent in the south of india kind of demi goddesses and they are believed to reside in a realm somewhere between earth and heaven so they have in alkapuri that is a realm governed by kuber what so, is what is what are these words <laughs> kuber is a in fact ravan's brother the brother of lord ravan and he uh, is supposed uh, to protect all the wealth of this world why in this on this earth so he has a big hoard and uh, he is like indra but in a demigod version for international listeners ravan is the mega villain of ramayana yeah the ramayana which is an indian epic yes. uh, who he was supposed to be the king of the yeah. rakshasas or the demons yeah yakshinis are these demi goddesses they are believed to also be uh, on earth so sometimes they just meander and they come to earth and when they come here they are mostly in their evil forms so they would like they they are very voluptuous they are very beautiful to look at but then there is this one form of them which you know once the seduction has worn off then they come into this evil form and they will of course their victims are usually men and that is how yakshinis function but there were so many folklore uh, folklore tales of people having sighted um, yakshinis and chudels and dyans so these are all our supernatural creatures that we talk about chudel is which chudel is a kind of a witch but uh, basically a chudel and a dian they have a very similar overlapping kind of origin uh, theory it is believed that when a woman dies at childbirth or when she is pregnant and if she is not um, cremated properly with all the rituals and all then because of uh, the latent desire in her mind she turns into a chudel and what happens in that reality so once that person becomes a chudel then she will be on this earth unsatisfied and she will not uh, be able to see the happiness of other women so it's a kind of a vengeful ghost not a ghost i would say an entity okay and dian almost similar lines okay so this is based on the you know like the region where we are coming from but mm. they are very similar lots of parallels mm. um what's the scariest ghost story you've heard in someone else's life maybe someone near you has there been Uh, an account that okay. just freaked the shit out of you okay so this uh, really happened when i was writing the spirits talk to me so uh, it's a co-authored book sarbajit mohanty he was my co-author and he's a paranormal investigator so the concept of the book was uh, 10 stories of his real life explorations what he had done so he sent me the first story which was his real story his real account So in Bhubaneswar uh, outskirts of it was a small village and in that village there was a very strange phenomenon happening which was young guys um very eligible young boys they would just wake up in the middle of the night walk out of their houses cross the main highway 
there was a forest on the other side they would go to the forest wherein there was a tree a huge tree they would just hang themselves on the tree and this happened multiple times with a lot of boys in that same village nobody knew why it happened why the same tree but it was kind of an expected thing that every few days you are going to find a boy hanging from the tree sarvajit went to explore it with his team he got all his he has got a lot of paranormal stuff that he uses so equipment i would say so he took that he went he explored and he found this huge mass of black energy dark energy what, what does that mean tree. he could sense it because he has psychics on his team so th- this is something that normal people do have a sense of but to a very small extent like when you get creeped out in a particular location we get location. creeped out we would just describe it as i got creeped out i do not know what happened i would just say a shadow passed and i don't know what it is but if you are a psychic and after talking to psychics like puja's par- uh, sarvajit's partner puja she is a psychic so when i spoke to her she could actually visualize those things she could actually see a form so she felt that there were yes there was a lot of sadness that happened in the tree what that sadness was we don't know and that's not that's beyond the point because it must have happened 500 years ago 1000 years ago we don't know but now that latent energy that is around the tree and because sarvajit and pooja they went there with the mission of finding out what's the truth about the tree they had to find a lot uh, they had to face a lot of difficulties there like there was a kind of what sh- how should i explain it a kind of a small mini tornado you know which engulfed the whole tree while they were there which was quite unheard of in those places <laughs> they heard you know, voices and they could actually see like people like how they show in hollywood movies the long black shadows the tall ones so they actually saw all that stuff so when the villagers would want would go to cut the tree the tree would not allow itself to be cut there would be kind of that person would fall sick the wood cutter or something and a tree cannot be cut in a single day so the day that he would try to cut it that evening he would fall sick and not so mm. they they understood that the tree does not want to be cut the tree still stands mm. we had dr radhakrishnan pillai on the show yesterday where we spoke about uh, the atharva ved and how it contains a lot of uh, elements of black magic as well and you know occult sciences he spoke about uh, these elements like trees nimbu mirchi nimbu mirchi is l- l- lemon, lemon lemon and chili lemon and chili that's one of my books again okay um you know in again india is one of those countries where there's so much spiritual wisdom everywhere there is a whole spiritual world in our country but then there is also this underbelly of spiritualism which is this whole occult side of things where uh in when you're growing up in india often especially when you're traveling around the country they tell you not to urinate on a tree yeah have you heard this before yeah What i've heard, heard it but this? i don't know about it they say that uh, trees can house uh, spirits mm. uh trees are a sort of safe heaven right for uh, spirits and that spirit can kind of possess you if uh, you urinate on it i don't know how true that is i've not urinated on a tree yet <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know but uh, what do you make of all this what i've heard is i have heard something similar to this not about urinating but not to walk under a tree especially a banyan tree at night yeah banyan tree is people tree you know yeah so because they believe that uh, there were betals on it no what is a betal that is the hanging kind of a ghost a, a ghost which hangs from a tree like a gargoyle it makes uh, it looks like a gargoyle but a gargoyle would be very different because a betal uh, usually does not have usually does not have a form again a betal is a man who has died and uh, because of some unfulfilled wishes he stays attached to a tree because a tree is a very permanent kind of thing right so he stays there mm. so that's what a betal is and a betal is supposed to again haunt the people who pass by mm. even travel with them to their homes and then jeopardize their entire lifestyle create havoc when the man is dead he returns back to the tree in one of the stories you spoke about um how you depossess a person or you cleanse an environment even in the movie exorcist where yeah. you know they hold a cross against a ghost uh in islam there's talk of jinns and how you know again there's a spiritual element that that's what malvis do uh in order to kind of cleanse a place uh even in hinduism there is an element of chanting and meditation which cleans environments 
is that how you counter these kind of dark energies according to you there are somewhere i think people have used those things and there has been a kind of a benefit like the people that i talk about jay alani for um, instance when jay goes there what he usually does is he tries to find out what's the root cause of this entire thing now in many of the cases the root cause is a human being playing mischief because that also happens there's some blind faith somewhere or um, sometimes you just uh, latch on to what that place is from which is the epicenter because there is always an epicenter of all these things if a haunting is happening in a particular area then there is one thing that is causing that haunting which i have seen a lot in jay stories mm. so like in one of his stories there was a, a curio you know kind of a souvenir which a person had bought from a foreign country and uh, that had a spirit in it and because of that uh, that guy had a terrible motorcycle accident he got disfigured he lost his life wife because of that and uh, uh, later on it was found that the whole epicenter of it was that particular curio which was carrying that ghostly what, what was the souvenir it was a kind of a cup i suppose just a very harmless looking mug but it had been possessed by so there were these objects also that we talk about you since you spoke about conjuring so the people the warrens they have they had this whole museum hmm which had all these uh, artifacts i think we'll have to give the listener some context here so i think in the conjuring towards the end of the movie they call uh deep possession experts i don't know what to call them paranormal investigators paranormal investigators they were um like. who kind of help clean up a place uh, mm-hmm. if you know it's it's deeply haunted yeah and that was the lawrences that was the warrens warrences ed and lorraine warren so oh the warrens okay warrens so uh the warrens have a museum that contains all these artifacts all these artifacts and they've just kept them there i would not want to enter that museum <laughs> including including the very famous annabelle doll that's still there today that's still there okay that's still there. the movie series you must yeah. have heard of yeah. we are also making ourselves vulnerable to the other world because they are listening to us they know that we are uh, interested in them so therefore you have to be ready because the ghost possibly such entities might uh, decide to show themselves to you hmm. that could happen because they know that you are trying to you know somewhere conjure them yeah and probably you need to be ready for it yourself yeah. also you need to be ready for mm. it you know as i kept meditating in life like my meditations kept becoming deeper and i kept, i kept feeling more and more fearless towards these entities like the same mm. entities that created so much deep fear i should not sleep alone till i was like 21 22 at the same stage year. of yeah same 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 yeah. i was i i still i don't know i'm not comfortable when i hear that there is a death somewhere around, around me because i have this very morbid fear of dead bodies uh and i had that even when my dad expired and uh, uh i was petrified when his body was to come home mm. but not because of any other reason but somehow uh you know death plays on my mind in mm. some ways and i feel that a person has gone to a world which is unknown mm. so some of it's like this vortex that pulls me in yeah i know i i hear you and you know over the course of this show and talking to people like yourself and dr radhakrishnan pillai i've just figured that there is a science behind this it's just that the world of science as we know it has not put in enough time effort research yeah. into these things like you can't just discount it as otherworldly I feel that's old school thinking. I think the real reason here is because there is no evidence. Science it depends I'm I'm a science person I'm a postgraduate in organic chemistry. So all of my life as a student uh, was spent in formulas and you know wa- wanting proof seeing proof. But now I know that there is no way that you can prove these things. How can you prove another world which is just energy? The the engineer in me wants to counter you with the question of electromagnetic fields. Like yes. there are devices to um, measure the amount of electromagnetism uh, in a particular yeah, the place. Yeah, ghost meters that they are called as the K2 meters. And what does that device specifically do? like in terms of it just detects the emf around the space like uh, if they were typically the very simple model of a k2 meter would have like five lights 
and uh, one light would be always blinking because there is always an electromagnetic frequency field around us so that would always be blinking but uh, sometimes if suppose this is a live wire now if i go near it it will be up to two lights or something like that but there were certain things certain places like somewhere in the deep of the jungle suddenly all five lights will come on now there's no reason why there should be an emf there but then they come on so th this is how it works now again this is an observed proof but you do not know what is causing it yet you infer that it may be a ghostly entity but uh, have you seen the ghostly entity no you are just making an inference mm. so that is where i feel that still we have that disconnect and uh, till the time we do not actually see ghost see a ghost like with our eyes our normal eyes or I experience a ghost or experience experiences are again individual so my experience the world may not believe it they will just debunk it i'm i'm talking about the people who do not believe in such kind of things but then you know technology is advancing by leaps and bounds like i just saw on twitter yesterday that uh, in japan there is a tech to record our dreams and play back to play those back to us so there is a technology for that now so i'm sure that um, you know something might happen but yeah as you also said we need to have that drive mm. to do something in this field we had any experiences with witchcraft at all no not really i would not say that okay when then that's a story for the next time i have a story i've actually been at the receiving end of witchcraft okay for a moment uh, what did happen okay we we're getting there yeah i thought we'll leave it for the next time let's have it um okay so i went on a uh, date like it was off of a dating app this happened 3 4 years ago maybe um first date it was fine i made it clear that i didn't want anything romantic but i was open to meeting again as in i didn't want a casual relationship also lots of people use dating apps to just kind of get to know new people and that was my intent so i met an older person i didn't pick up anything the first time i met her i was also kind of i had just broken up so i was rebounding i think wasn't really looking for anything but i just felt a normal good conversation the second time i met her um she said that i had a lot of fun the last time but i can't believe that you didn't observe something because the first time i met her we spoke about spiritualism we spoke about these larger than life concepts you know intuition things like that she's like your intuition didn't pick up that i'm kind of into witchcraft mm. so then i said um, no not really but i also got interested <laughs> in terms of what is going to happen here okay now let's dial back a year or two before this happened i have a friend who is a strong psychic he's a high level psychic he's a good friend of mine uh when we were in a part of delhi once upon a time and he claims that delhi is one of the most haunted places because it's one of the oldest cities in the world technically and it's seen a lot of uh battles over centuries so he claims that there's a lot of angst and um pain in delhi because of the ghosts of the people and all that so sometimes when i'm just walking with this guy in delhi in the daytime he'll start doing this he'll rub his hands like this and then he loudly clap okay and he'll continue rubbing his hands and the first few times he had done that in front of me i looked at him and asked him why are you doing that and he said no no it's nothing and he'd keep doing this at some other part of the road so then i bothered him i asked him why are you doing this and he said i'm sort of just creating a protective field i'm like sending things away that's all he told me i don't even know what that means okay now let's come back to this story um now this girl i was on sort of i won't call it a date but i was meeting for the second time and that shop was shutting so she's like okay what do you want to do now so i said let's go somewhere so then she told me okay let's go to juhu beach or this particular part of bandstand or this particular part of carter road you know that okay. part of carter road there now the weird thing is i've had a conversation with that same psychic friend about these three locations that she named and he said that he's had some kind of ghost encounters in those three locations so a normal person would have said no no i don't want to go with you and i'm going home <laughs> I wanted content <laughs> so I said okay uh let's let's do this okay uh so we decided to go to Carter Road now we got off on Carter Road and we decided to walk along the promenade 
and it was relatively empty as compared to what it is normally okay now we're walking and maybe 10 seconds 15 seconds into walking this woman does this <laughs> and then i'm on high alert a little bit i don't know what she's doing so we keep walking and we sit down on this particular part of cart road where there are people but it's still got a slight creepy vibe i don't want to name what part of cart road it is because it might cause a lot of frenzy online but it's a populated part so we're sitting there i go into my uh spiritualism realm okay because i've had occult experiences in my life which i've spoken about on the show as well i've had a very strong sleep paralysis experience which turned out to be something real eventually as in i someone else at some another psychic had come to my house and told me that yes the experience you had had was real so i i've dealt with these things before according to me and the way i'd come out of it was through mantra chanting when i was a kid someone taught me a mantra which had worked for me now i knew that i'm dealing with another occult experience here so when i sat down with her in my head i'm just doing a mantra job to sort of protect myself it was the same mantra job that had helped me as a kid now while i was sitting with her we were just having a very loose kind of conversation it was interesting but it wasn't really interesting there was small talk and she wasn't really talking much through this for some reason i was talking a lot in the same way that i'm doing now mm-hmm. you know she'd ask me a small question and then what i'd give her something and then she'd always end it with like a yes or no a uh, kind of question where i would have to answer in a yes or no and as i kept talking to her i must have sat there with her for like half an hour i just kept feeling more and more dizzy and i didn't know what the fuck is going on i just felt a strong gut feeling to leave from there after half an hour because i was really just i was feeling tired or dizzy i don't know what it was so i told her okay i'm going i booked her an ola i booked myself an uber okay you're going in two separate directions when i sat in the uber i'm still feeling dizzy and i hadn't told anybody not my co-founders not my manager nobody not my teams now the psychic friend calls me some this okay and he's like who are you with so i'm like why she said no just tell me who are you with so i said um just i met someone he's like i strongly feel someone's done something to you there's some kind of dark aura on you what have you done and then i told him that this happened so he said okay wait he gave me a mantra he texted me something and he told me wherever you are right now meditate in that vehicle and just focus on that mantra and i swear to god my head was spinning in that vehicle as i was meditating and i was doing that mantra i didn't know what the f- happened when i went home he told me some more things he said have a salt water bath and yeah. all that i don't have you heard of the salt yeah, water salt bath? water is quite common it it's supposed to wash off it negative energy the aura that I, clings again, to you yeah i don't i don't know what it is but i am a meditator i meditate for an hour daily and i've been doing this for years now that night when i sat for meditation um now here's the kind of meditation i do right like it's deeply technical and i kind of intuitively know when to stop doing it because sometimes your body doesn't isn't ready to go to a deeper level of meditation so i get an intuition and i gently stop but on this day when i was meditating i didn't get out of it gently like at the peak of my meditation i felt like someone took a long pin and just shoved it into my finger and i have no idea what that meant i asked him i think he knew that something was on but he refused to tell me what it was he's like if i tell you you may not want to meditate again and all but just forget it and keep meditating that was it i never spoke to that lady again but i also like kind of cut her off from it it sounded like some voodoo stuff I don't know what it was. And she knew who I was and um uh, I think she was in the quest for fame. That's what okay. I gauged from her. Uh and they say that black magic can be used to take something that someone else owns and bring mm. it to yourself. Youth, yeah, money, that fame. kind of thing. I don't know what it was. So that's been my experience with witchcraft in saying that there is a whole positive angle of witchcraft. There are positive witches 
uh, in the modern day that's a whole other subject but yeah that's yeah. my experience yes we'll get into that positive thing because there is also a lot to speak uh, i don't know if you have heard of the village of mayong in assam no so that's believed to be the birthplace of black magic it's in yeah. assam and uh, where, where in assam is it near gohat it is uh, near the kamakhya temple yeah in near guwahati so there it's believed that uh, every one day practi- uh, is a practitioner of black magic and they use it for healing they use it for healing there's something in the land that uh, makes things happen so people with all these kinds of ailments they go there and uh, there are these tantrics and ojhas and stuff so will do some mantra on you and cleanse you spiritually a trip to assam has been a long standing wish for this same is i wish to explore yeah, this world it's there's a lot of mysticism in assam mm. even other indian says bengal also has a lot that's what i yeah. heard Bengal also, and um, horror is very popular in Bengal. Horror literature, I mean, mm. being an author, I know that. <laughs> Neil De Silva. So it was a great episode. Uh, I do think there's more to unpack, and we hope to have you again on the show. I hope it was a good experience for you. Thank you so much for having me on the show, and we. It was fun, fun talking to you, fun sharing my experiences and listening to yours. Yeah. I hope your audiences also enjoy this. Uh, no, Thanks. I think we're too like-minded. slightly messed up dudes <laughs> so that we all are <laughs> uh just great getting to know you sir thank you thanks that's the episode for today the intention with trs from this point onwards is that we're going to bring you a lot more dark content i'd love recommendations from you folks the intention is to bring on paranormal investigators people who are interested in subjects like ghosts subjects like tantra i want to know what you guys thought of today's episode i want to know what you guys thought of our edit of today's episode with the music stapled in this is the kind of content that brings us the most joy as a team when we're involved in this process of creation when we're learning more about these dark topics and of course dark topics get all the views so we love it all the more for more dark topics make sure you follow us on spotify every episode is available on spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world hope you enjoyed this episode hope it didn't scare you all that much and if you're listening to this alone at night all i want to say is that they're watching you as you listen to the ranveer show i'm kidding i just want to say i love you see you <laughs>